następnym prezenterem będzie gość Włoch, pani Sonia Montedziowe, której prezentacja dostała się na, do agendy Open Source Day przez Call for Papers. Poruszy temat, czy, czy armia boi się open source'u, jest członkiem Document Foundation i pracuje też jako osoba wdrażająca open source w prowincji Perugia. Sonia, are you ready? Aha, uh -huh, I'm ready. The stage is yours. Uh, good morning, I'm Sonia Montegiove, I'm Libre Italia president and a member of the Document Foundation. With me there is uh, Paolo Storti, another member of uh, the Document Foundation and a founder of Libre Italia Association. Libre Italia is a voluntary Italian association founded by the Italian community of LibreOffice which arose from Libre Italia Google Plus community. Libre Italia is made up of uh, ICT specialists and civil servants and simple users uh, who want to share uh, their uh, solutions uh, and their problems and their best practice of migration uh, from Microsoft Office uh, to, to LibreOffice in particular. And Libre Italia Google Plus community has about 2,700 active members that every day share opinions and recommendations about LibreOffice and about open source software in general. The community is very important for professional and domestic users who are looking for specific problems. But uh, mm, what is the problem of free and open source software, especially in Italy? I don't know if it's only in Italy, I, I hope so. Um, in my country, when we talk about free and open source software, people are surprised because they don't know what you are talking about very often. So uh, it's not a generation problem. It doesn't depend on your degree or where you live, on your geographic statement. It's just a cultural problem. And this is what we have learned uh, from our seminars and meetings in schools and in public administrations. So uh, where do we need? Where do free and open source software need? Certainly we need money. To, to pay developers and to organize uh, uh, events and seminars and courses. Uh, sure, we need volunteers engaging the community, but uh, I think that above all, uh, we need communication. Because if we communicate in the right way, uh, all the opportunities uh, of free software and the ethical values that it embodies uh, the benefits of open source, surely we would have much better chance to spread it. This is uh, the best five mistaken beliefs uh, about free and open source software, especially in Italy, I think. Uh, when we say free and open source software, people think only the word free. So they think that uh, they don't pay for the software, but uh, they, can save, and they can save money, but they believe that uh, the software is not a good one. Unfortunately, often free is synonymous of lesser and lower value. And when you say you can use LibreOffice, people think, ah, okay, LibreOffice, it uh, looks like Microsoft Office. Mm, not the same thing, but very, very similar. People think it's a software of lower value, a makeshift solution. And when you suggest you can use LibreOffice, people think that they can also use Google Docs, for example, uh, the Google Docs for free, so that they don't really need another free program. Um, unfortunately, they don't think about security problems or uh, digital freedom, for example. 
And uh, in Italy, also in the schools or in public administrations, sometimes you can find install a crooked program, a, pro a crooked program. Uh, and this is the worst example and message that we can give to the students, for example. So the culture of legality should be valued and supported also with uh, migration to free and open source software. And uh, when we talk about the community, about free and open source software community, people think, oh, I can't help the community. I'm not a developer. I'm not an nerd. But it's wrong. We have to say that there are many ways to, to be a part of a community. And we have to say you are a part of the community also using free and open source software, for example. We must help people to contribute to the community. And uh, the list of mistaken beliefs could go on uh, until uh, next year, I think. So uh, what does Libre Italia uh, do and uh, what did Libre Italia do in these two first years of the activity, of our activity? Um, we promoted LibreOffice and open source and open standard in particular in the schools and in public administrations. Uh, uh, we supported open data usage and we organized uh, many free training uh, for developers and teachers and students uh, and also in public administrations. Uh, and it's important because uh, uh, the spread of free software in Italy is uh, patchy. There are some best practices like uh, uh, the Ministry of Defense uh, uh, but uh, there is uh, still much to do, especially uh, in public administration and schools where it's necessary to present the opportunities and, uh, uh, of the open source software community and the open source software um, where too often it's unknown. Libre Italia has calculated that Italian public administration ca could gain uh, 600,000 million euro adopting LibreOffice. And we all know that this is not the only reason why public administration should choose open source. And I think thanks also on the, to the communication work of Libre Italia, Last year, we signed uh, an effort with the uh, Italian Ministry of Defense that is going uh, to migrate uh, its uh, uh, 150,000 desktops to LibreOffice, uh, and uh, it's adopting uh, the ODF uh, as, uh, as format, as saving format. And I'm very happy for this news, and I'm very happy because uh, uh, Libre Italia uh, can support the biggest project of migration in Italy. And what can we say about uh, LibreOffice, uh, uh, Paolo? Uh, Turk. Yes. So, uh, first of all, hello everybody. I'm here trying to share with you some information, ideas around LibreOffice as product and project. Okay, so first of all, I think you all know LibreOffice and maybe some of you using LibreOffice and maybe before you uh, used OpenOffice, okay? So what is? It's basically a suite. You can create documents, you can create spreadsheets, you can manage databases, you can organize presentations, and you can draw. That's it. So, a lot of stuff. Like Sonia uh, just said, it's not Microsoft. It's not Microsoft Office. It's not a clone. It's another kind of product with a very different story. I don't want to bother you with the, all the story of the product, but it's very long. 
it's bought before Microsoft, just to say. And the project and the product itself are managed by this foundation, the Document Foundation. Basically, the Document Foundation is uh, a German um, non-profit organization that basically has all these, let's say, sections and want to manage and help to grow the project and try to coordinate all the, um, all the people working around the project. Because you have to know, uh, around the LibreOffice project, there are at least 700 people, okay? So voluntary contributors, uh, translators, um, people helping with events like this one, people helping with uh, marketing stuff, okay? So they have board of directors, so basically uh, the ones that coordinate the activities. They have the membership committee, so uh, a bunch of people that uh, analyze every single uh, application about membership and decide who can be member or not. Then the engineering steering committee that basically uh, try to uh, work with all the voluntary developers because there are a lot, like I said. Uh, for sure, they have some kind of staff people, so uh, for administration, secretary, releases, infrastructure, QA, marketing and community. And they have a budget. They have a budget because uh, usually this kind of projects lives with uh, donations. And also in this case, they mainly have donations. So you can go to their website, libreoffice.whatever, and then you can donate money. But they also have some kind of companies that basically support the project and maybe donate or money or manpower, for example. And what about the product itself? Not only the project, but the product itself. Why LibreOffice right now is the product to choose? Because it guarantees you a high quality and a high security level. For example, I'm not speaking about functionalities because we all know the functionalities of this kind of product, but it's very important to analyze the quality in the development and the security in the software itself. For example, let me take a note, okay. Uh, they have, for sure, a commit management, that's for sure, but very interesting, they have uh, a bunch of Tinder boxes, so basically uh, machines, virtuals or physical, that builds every day every single version of LibreOffice in every single infrastructure, so for every single operating system. So they can test every day if uh, the, the day's commit are correct or if they broke the code, for example. It's very interesting because the, the next day you can work on the, on the error, on the problems. Uh, automated test. Another very good and interesting uh, point because there are uh, 10,000 documents that basically every day uh, will be tested on every single build of LibreOffice on every single operating system and architecture. So you are sure, we all are sure that every single build can communicate and interoperate with other kind of uh, document systems, for example, Microsoft Office or different version of LibreOffice or different versions of standards, for example, ODF, okay? Another very important stuff, security. LibreOffice right now has uh, a, a bunch of independent R&D laboratory that basically provide tests on the code. So uh, we don't need to trust only in the developer, in the LibreOffice developer stuff, but we have third-part companies 
laboratory that guarantee you the quality of the software. And weekly, the, 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 um, the code, the source code, is scanned by Coverty. And about that, we have another very interesting graphic. I don't know if we have, yeah, we have it. So, defects every thousand lines of code. Everybody know what it means? So, the average of the project, we can see that the average of proprietary software is here, 0 0.7. The average of the old open office is around, around 1, so 0 0.9. We have a lot of projects here, MariaDB, Thunderbird, Blender, Samba, Linux itself, but here we are. LibreOffice, near zero. So, what does it mean? It means that the code itself is basically without defects, not without bugs, defects, formal defects. So, well-written code, not bug-free code, okay? And then, Last but not least, LibreOffice work with the ODF standard. The ODF, ODF standard, open document format, is an ISO standard uh, recognized by uh, a lot of gov governments and organizations all around the world, including the NATO, for example. Uh, the main difference between ODF and other standards, just to say it, is that ODF is uh, built to guarantee you to have the access to the information inside the file, whatever happened. So you have um, a cab file in which you can find all the raw data about the, the stuff you, you, you place in the file and the structure of the file. So no matter what, you will be always um, able to open this cab and extract the data you need. It's an assurance, it's a warranty. And yes, many public administration, governing agencies all around the world are using LibreOffice right now. These are only a few examples of the biggest uh, installation, implementation, deployment. For example, French government, uh, Valencian community, um, Dutch defense ministry, and so on. And we have, like, as uh, Sonia just said, one of the most important Italian migration in act right now. So. Ministry of Defense, Italian Ministry of Defense, a lot of personal computers are migrating to LibreOffice. And in the, in the last stint, Sonia will speak a lot about this migration because it's very important. And the last, uh, last part of my, of my talk, I want to share with you some information about the, the protocol because TDF, the Document Foundation, designed a protocol to describe how to migrate to LibreOffice, trying to help people to avoid common mistakes, trying to create a common way to do things, trying to share knowledge between people, governments, and countries, for example. So here we are. We have a lot of phases. We have the project manage management phases, the communication one, the analysis, the test, but which are, in my opinion, the most important section in this kind of protocol? First of all, communication. The protocol is designed to have, let's say, a safe migration. So a safe migration, you have to keep in mind that the product itself is good. So, no problem with the product. But you have to work with people. 
And in that case, you know, people don't like changes. So you have to try to involve people, try to uh, let them know what you're doing, trying to have them on your side. So you have to communicate before the project, during the project, and after the project, inside the company and outside the company. And in this case, you have the possibility to analyze before the migration what you're doing with the software you're using. And you have a good opportunity to rethink the organization of the processes. You can change, for example, the strategy about the macros. You can try to change the way people use, uh, for example, the, um, the models in Writer and stuff like that. So this is, um, this is the main, in my opinion, uh, the most important part for the product, uh, project itself, for the migration protocol itself. But be, be careful, you have a lot of phases. You have to analyze what you have before the migration. You have to perform some impact tests. You have to test your own file because you have to be sure that your user can use your actual file. You need to perform some training to users, to support, to help desks. You need to uh, give them support, some kind of support. You, uh, you can choose some kind of long-term supported version of LibreOffice. There are many, there exist. And you have to, uh, to know how the product evolve. And all this stuff is designed with this timeline. So analysis, and as you can see, communication start at the very beginning and never end, okay? So that's all for me. I pass the microphone to Sonia again to share with us the project Libre Defesa. Thank you. Thank you. Libre Difesa uh, starts the migration project last year, started last year uh, with the analysis of the documents and uh, of the uh, third part solutions uh, with uh, um, an interoperability with Office Suite. And um, on the 4th of June, they decided uh, with an official document, uh, the, the migration project. And uh, on uh, 16th June, uh, uh, Generale Sileo, uh, the project manager of Libre Difesa, wrote us an email uh, asking a meeting to know how Libre Italia uh, could support the migration project. And uh, on 15th uh, September, we signed uh, an effort uh, with uh, Libre Italia guaranteed its free support for training of the trainer for the realization of online courses on LibreOffice and for organization uh, the meetings uh, with the manager of the Ministry of Defense. And the, in, in this slide, uh, there are the activities uh, that the uh, uh, Ministry of Defense and Libre Italia done in this, in this last month, and communication to top ranks, uh, and uh, training for trainer to trainers, uh, training to internal support staff, uh, training to IT leaders and departments, seminars to top ranks uh, to communicate the reasons of the project uh, and the quality of, uh, of LibreOffice uh, of LibreOffice uh, project. And uh, the Ministry of Defense screened uh, the third party applications and analyzed uh, training needs. And uh, now 
they started the impact tests on pilot departments and they started the migration to LibreOffice. On uh, 31th March, they migrated about 5,000 desktops and uh, we are happy because they hadn't any problems. <laughs> Okay, this is an image of um, uh, the courses organized by Libre Italia uh, with the trainers, with um, the Ministry of Defense trainers. And um, about online trainings, uh, we realized about uh, uh, 19 lessons already available with the differences from Microsoft Office to LibreOffice and um, the defense uh, will uh, publish uh, uh, these uh, lessons uh, under uh, Creative uh, Commons license. And so uh, we, we will um, localize uh, easily, or we can uh, um, be localized uh, rather easily by providing text and image. And uh, in this year, um, we, we will realize an additional training lessons, uh, uh, in particular for uh, um, European uh, driving uh, license uh, with LibreOffice uh, ECDL. And here um, we have five key, key questions and answers uh, about migration projects. Uh, the first one, will the migration be a worth of time? We can say no, because the users, the, users the, the end user training will increase the capability of the users and, uh, mm, and users will feel they are in control of their productivity, so um, they are able to to manage the problems uh, and to solve the problems about LibreOffice and about uh, the migration of documents and templates uh, from Microsoft Office uh, to LibreOffice. Uh, another question, should we anticipate an increase of calls to help, to help desk? Uh, I, we can say no because uh, uh, and user training in classroom uh, plus e-learning uh, could help uh, users. So they, they, will, uh, they will not call to help desk uh, for help. Should we foresee a review and update of all documents? We can say no, because most of Microsoft Office documents, spreadsheets and presentation will open as they are, and only a few will need a more consistent rework, in particular if uh, uh, you have spreadsheet with macro, but the migration project is a good, a good opportunity to re-engineer the processes, internal processes. Should we uh, will end user complain about the migration uh, we have to say yes, because communication will reduce the resistance uh, to change of the users, but there is uh, a 3 or 10% in public administration, I think, of users will physiologically complain. And will we get the necessary support from the ecosystem? I, I can say yes, because the LibreOffice community can help uh, the migration project. Uh, and in addition, uh, several companies in the, the LibreOffice ecosystem offer a wealth of certified support. Lesson learned. Uh, the TDF micro migration protocol represents a fundamental reference for all the migration projects, not only uh, LibreOffice, uh, but all the migration to open source software, we think. And uh, migration, impossible migrations don't 
exist. Ministry of Defense uh, can, uh, can learn. And the best lesson learned is the volunteers are our biggest asset, I think. Thank you very much. Grazie mille, Sonia Paolo.